The Mark Dacey Show, brought to you on Broadband Box Office Network, coming to you directly from the East Coast at VK Media Studios. We stream live every second Monday of the month, and we're archived on iTunes. So, like us on Facebook. Now, enjoy the show. Well, Harriet Carter, please to report to the driving range. Harriet Carter, Harriet. Oh, hello. <laughs> Well, maybe I will, Mr. Smarty Pants. Well, I just found out that I can wash my feet with my feet. I thought it has been years. I, I should have known by now that you could wash. That's right. Somebody restrain that child. <laughs> the ravings of a lunatic mind. <laughs> No, I just I just found this out. I don't know who told me, or I don't. Maybe I just came to it. Like it just came to me. I'm not sure. But uh, now I found it. I could do just as good a job without bending over, which is like for me that's news, and it feels pretty good. And funny how I resisted that change for so long. I don't. Maybe it was like a boutique thing. I mean, I'm 147 years old, and I just found out that I can wash my feet with my feet. I did. I, I've been doing it by hand. It's, it, it's like a whole new way of looking at things. I'm changing. I'm really changing. I'm, I'm growing. I'm growing in different ways. It's the essential process of the universe. If there's anything more consistent in the universe, it's change. <laughs> you may now turn to Chapter 14 for our exercise in universalisms. No, it's true. So anyway, and I, maybe, maybe you're still washing your feet with your hands. You don't have to do it. You could go like this. And I didn't and they're just as clean. Who knew? But I've changed. I mean, some people don't change. They go through their whole life without changing. Like that craft store, you know, Hobby Lobby. So it like if you're pregnant, you know, and 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 you don't want to be pregnant uh, and you're an employee with Hobby Lobby, well, you know what? Uh, the insurance is is not a thing with them. So if you're kind of stuck <laughs> because if you can't pay for help and you don't want to be pregnant, Hobby Lobby says, it's too bad, but you can come in and buy some valuable gifts and prizes or something. It's, and then, and every model, you're stuck with it and you just, you put it together. So now as they say, you're stuck like glue. I mean, I stopped in at Hobby Lobby just the other day. I, I, I wanted to get one of those uh, unborn baby puzzles that they have there, you know? So I, I understand that they have a a quilt pattern of a fetus, but which is, of course, they themselves ultimately retain the rights to. So even if you buy it, the womb is sold separately and they, they still retain it. It's just the way that they feel, even though the Supreme Court has said the right belongs to you, not for Hobby Lobby, it belongs to them. And now even though abortion is legal, <laughs> Uh, they won't accept returns, uh, especially after the first trimester. So, <clears throat> it's something. It's something in their stock. It, they, you know, it's their it's their stock and trade. They they have someone in the stocks. However, they will cover Viagra because, as we know, life begins with erection. <laughs> so they'll cover Viagra, but they won't they won't cover if you're pregnant and you don't want to be pregnant anymore. So. I do not presume to take ownership of women's rights, but they do. And since we're on that subject, I also uh, want to remind you that I am taking umbrage at People magazine for their use of the word bump instead of using the correct word, which is or are pregnant or with child. So in describing the child to be as a bump, they're just like degrading the whole magical, mystical wonderfulness of it all. You know what I mean? So, well, bump, bump. Here's Jennifer Jason Lee's bump. I wonder what that means. Bump, page two. <laughs> Another human being is not a bump, okay? Yeah, that's right. It's serious business. And so it did come to pass that in those days, Mary and Joseph and her bump did go out from the land of Nazareth and did come to the Judea Sheraton inquiring of a room but there was no room at the inn. <laughs> Welcome to the uh, Judea Sheraton. Uh, my name is Will. Uh, how can I help you? Um, 
Hi, I'm uh, I'm here uh, looking for a room tonight with my uh, with my with her and and I. Right, right. Of course, uh, reservations. Uh, we don't uh, have reservations. You don't have reservations. It's the holidays. Jesus. Mar and Mary says, I think that will be a good name. All right, not ready. We'll take care of the bump in the room. Okay, just fine. Okay. So <laughs> later for that, let's just move on. So I'm sorry. We're all filled up with the House of David bar mitzvah. Uh, I'm really, but listen, I have a friend. Has a little place just up the road in that little town of Bethlehem. It's not much, but it's stable. And it's sheep. I, I mean cheap. Uh, listen, you can't miss it. It's got a great big star over the top of it. And if you mention my name, Will Herod, okay? I know, I know, I know, I know. My uncle's the king. Okay, so, but we don't get along. We don't talk. Thank God. Yeah. So, uh, say, are you guys married? And if not, what's that bump? Uh, just some puzzles and a, a quilt from Hobby Lobby. <laughs> okay, well, uh, uh, Mary, uh, Mary, Mary Mass, Mary Mass to you. And, and uh, Murray, Murray Mass to you. Yeah, I hope you find a room. Good luck. Some people. 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 That's a good name for a magazine. Will you be quiet? We got to take care of the bump, and later we'll get the room, okay? Later. Page three. <laughs> By the way, I haven't welcomed everybody to the show yet, have I? No, I've been just caught up in ranting. Uh, just th things get to me. They drive me crazy, and if I don't talk to them, you know, uh, about them or to anyone of... That I get, when I get a chance to, I'll just talk to myself in my car, which probably is what I should be doing anyway. <laughs> anyway, I'd like to welcome you to the So you're welcome. Okay? You're welcome to the show. My special musical guests tonight are Jan Lowe and Pam Lynn. Uh, with an expanded house band tonight. Oh, yes, presented right here for your edification. Both wine-soaked and sugar-cured. Absolutely. So this portion of the show, of course, being brought to you by BP. Yes, BP, British Petroleum, who are building a brand new gas station down the street from me for some odd reason. I know, I thought we were done with BP, but no, have you seen the commercials? Oh, they're making things clean for us. There's clean people in like clean shirts doing things like by the, in their factories and, and in their rivers. They're clean, they're, they're selling this cleanly commercial. It's just, yes. BP, who brought you that crazy three-month oil spill down in the Caribbean or the Gulf of Mexico or, you know, down there somewhere. It was a long time ago. I can't remember. Ha, ha, ha. La, la, la. Anyway, LOL. Sorry about that. Anyway, we'd like to make it up to you. So, by, uh, by, um, just kidding. We're not going to make it up to you. <laughs> The fact is, we're, we're not going to do anything like that. What we want to do is sell you more of our gas. Okay, so, uh, listen, we've got this new gas, and it's cleaner. Oh, it's so clean, you won't get dirty, and your car will get clean, everything's so clean, and we can begin advertising to you again, and we for, forget about that whole mess down there, and we can make up whatever was wrong between us. We can get back together again if we really try, can't we? I mean, we'll be friends, pussycat kittens and baby bottoms and bikinis. Ooh, sure, we could do it. Absolutely. Listen, brought to you by BP, the better people petroleum people. <laughs> yes, the British are coming. The British are coming again. Run, run for your lives. Or be prepared for a nice little oil bath soon in an ocean near you. So uh, please stand by. We'll be back in a moment after a word from our real sponsor. Our real sponsor, which is coming up momentarily. Compete. 
You've got to be strong. To win, you've got to be smart. Maybe you can be one of us. The few, the proud, the Marines. Or, or not. Or, oh, did you see that? I was almost a Marine there for a second. I kind of faded out of being one there. But I could have been one anyway. I've decided that this show is like nothing more than some graffiti that you might otherwise see on the side of a highway. Skark was here, you know. <laughs> you ever see that? Yeah, Skark. Both are graffiti artists and I are trying to achieve some kind of higher recognition. You know, I mean, that's all, right? Okay. So he or she is defacing uh, the wall while I am just defacing the web in my own way. Um, but... Each is a work of art, you know, a search of definition in an otherwise indifferent world, you know. The only difference is looking at a highway wall at 60 miles an hour. It come and goes. Skark. Huh? Who, who's Skark? It's, it's come and gone. But here, it's like an hour's worth of who is Mark Dacey and why doesn't he just write his name on the side of a highway wall and be done with it? <laughs> no, 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 no. And the only saving grace on this show, actually, is my wonderful guests who come by from time to time. So, now, if you would warmly welcome into wherever you are in your nests, 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 my wonderful musical guests, Jan Lo and Pam Lin. One, two,
you. Pictures of hope from child reach. Families and communities freeing themselves from the grip of the world's cruelest poverty with the help of child reach sponsorship. Self-help programs that mean clean water, medicine, schools, food, and a real chance for a better life. If you'd like to be part of these wonderful pictures, call 1-800-346-1100. 1-800-346-1100. Child Reach Sponsorship. Yes, it works. Hello. We're back. We're live. We're doing it again. I'm talking with Jan Lowe and Pam Lynn. I'm thinking Jan and Pam or Lowe and Lynn. I know, right? I know. <laughs> it's like, I don't, it could be something. Does that work? Yeah, it works. Uh, Jan Lowe and Pam Lynn. There you go. So just so that everybody knows who's who here. Mark Daisy, that <laughs> doesn't matter. <laughs> who knew? Um, some folks, I understand, some, some folks knew you were going to be on the show, and, and uh, uh, they, they wrote in some questions. They, they, they texted in some, uh, they, they twerked in some ideas, mm -hmm. and our, our, our crack staff has gone through them and, and selected two or, two or three questions. Awesome. Are, are you up for, Go for it. maybe, if, uh, okay. Go for it. Your game, yeah, awesome. so am I. Okay, this is from Joe Brennan of Doylestown. Joe Brennan of Doylestown writes, <clears throat> Do you think squirrels are ubiquitous? Absolutely. I don't know. I'll trust her. They are that. absolutely ubiquitous. They're everywhere at once. Okay. I've always believed that. Great, good. Okay, that's enough. Right, um, <laughs> Marie Powell of Hollywood <clears throat> writes, uh, Termite control. Uh, live and let live or kill and be killed? Kill and be killed. I like that one. Kill him, kill him, be killed. Yeah. I have to kill him, be killed. Okay, uh, Nancy Rockmail of uh, Fort Wayne. The moon. Love it, hate it. Love it. Love it. Absolutely love it. Love it. I hate it. <laughs> okay. So now questions uh, from me. Do I look all right? You look hot. Am I too tall? No, you're not. No, just doing, doing good? Yeah. All right. I look all right, but you guys look good and you sound great. Okay, Thanks so very much for thank coming you. down. This is so thank nice. Uh, I've known Jan for a, such long a long time. time now. Yeah, we're old friends, mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> and I I have met you twice now, right. and only uh, just uh, tonight have I actually saw you because every time I go and see this girl, she's like done. Oh, uh, Pam's leaving. Well, I, oh, okay, but so I'm glad I finally got a chance. Thank I know you. you're gonna gonna do another song, but before that, uh, how long has this project been going on? Not that long. It's about a month, right? Maybe. I've known her for a while, but we just started working together. So, do you have a, a, a name for it yet? Pam and Jan, Jan Pam. and Jan. Pam 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 why do you play music? Well, I mean, you know, because today it's like the atmosphere, the environment. You show up at a live show, you're out there, you're doing a stage show somewhere, and you're simply unacknowledged, unregarded, ignored. You're even like off in the corner. Why do you want to? Do, why do you want to perform? I, I don't know why I do this, but I mean, why do you do? Why do you want to perform? Well, I enjoy interacting with other people. That's one thing. One of the best things about doing this project is spending time with her and playing music with her and talking with her and hanging out with her. Yeah. Yeah, we both have a lot of skeletons in our houses. So. Yeah. I mean, I don't mean that. I no, mean, but it's great to find it. skeletons, you know. I mean, I don't oh. mean like, we probably have the other kind too, but I don't have a lot of closets, so they're just everywhere. <laughs> But you, yeah, but you uh, put it on your sleeve, which is great, and it's great to have a musician and an artist who you can can find. Oh my gosh! Really, you should show that to camera no, three it's or wherever. Right. I wiped it. Oh off. really? It's not that great. Uh, yeah, yeah, she's an artist. Too. Jan is, is an artist. Yes, she's a visual artist and uh, and a body paint artist and and an artist and a car and, artist too. And a car artist. That's right. You had that crazy car for the longest mm -hmm. time in Montclair driving around. Piano on the back. Yeah. Uh, that's right. Yeah, it was like five easy pieces. I kept expecting Jack Nicholson to come out and start playing that piece from Chopin or something. I don't know. Um, how did you guys meet? 
I walked into an open mic, what was it, two years ago? Yes. And I see a gentleman playing guitar, and accompanying him is this woman on bass. And I said, wow, she's amazing. Yeah. She's, she's unbelievable. She's so talented. Jazzy, jazzy, they call her Jazzy Jan jazzy for Jan a reason. For a reason. <laughs> yeah. I met Jazzy Jan uh, many years ago, and she started showing me these chords that were not possible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they were like, she makes it look so easy. Yeah, with, with her nose, she would cover the bass, mm -hmm. and then the rest of it, it was like, wow, it yeah. was they were great. And they yeah. sounded wonderful because nobody does that, you know? Mm. Nobody, like, does that. No. No. And it was great stuff. Yeah, and and, the, and your songs are great. Now, I understand that you were, uh, you've were you written both of these songs tonight mm -hmm. that you're doing? Mm -hmm. yes. Well, that, so how long have you been writing? Oh, a long time. Since, yeah. I guess, like 30 years, 20 years, wow. 25. I love mm -hmm. to write. Yeah. So, how many songs do you have? Um, I have 50 completed, I guess, and I have hundreds just floating around. Pieces uh -huh. here, pieces there, verses, choruses. You know? Now, when you say completed, do you mean recorded or, or just completed? I have some recordings, but they're pretty pretty bad. Yeah, I, I, I got away from writing for a while, and I'm just getting back into it. So, you know, I'm digging up all these old songs uh -huh. that I've had for years. And, uh -huh. So. She yeah. plays drums and bass too. I just thought people ought to know that. <laughs> well, I was just with Jan at a place called Jigs uh, last week, and uh, I, I sat in I, I, playing drums with my hand yes, sort of, great. and, and then you handed me drumsticks. I'm not a drummer, but you're playing bass, yeah. and you're playing guitar, and I sat back there, and I felt a little embarrassed about <laughs> not being able no, to great. contribute on the same level. always had great level, rhythm, amazing as it were. rhythm. Um, Okay, well, that's, I don't have anything else to say. All right, okay. <laughs> I'm all out of No, no, th thanks very much for coming down. It's our down. pleasure. You need it, like a cool name so that next time that I come yeah, and see you or next time you're on the show, we, I can say, and here they are, the moon squirrels. The moon squirrels. The moon squirrels. The moon moon squirrels. <laughs> or squirrely moons. You know, <laughs> that's squirrely not bad. We're going to have to give some money to these squirrels. people now. Um, <laughs> yeah, we got to call them up. Okay, well, you're going you're gonna to play uh, play another. Uh, so, oh, wait, where are, where are you playing? Where, where are you playing right now? Well, I have a... I have two, a bi-weekly uh, open mic. Mm. Is that what you call it, bi-weekly? No. Could be. Twice a week I have an open mic at Jigs's Corner Music Saloon in Butler. Tuesdays and Thursdays. Yeah. And it's a lot of fun. It is Dan a lot of fun. There's it's some dogs. a lot of It's fun. great to have it there. Yes. And I've they dropped. have broccoli now, which is great. It's and what? really good. They have broccoli there with a little bit of garlic and butter. It tastes oh. good. <laughs> <laughs> for a bar, you know, to have nice something. It's not old French fries and burgers anymore. Yeah, now you can get broccoli and mashed potatoes, yeah. so that's awesome. They're so. actually growing their own wheat behind the bar. They don't know it, but it's there. Now, see, I think that's wheat anyway back there. No, no, no. It's a lovely place, and I, and I like it. And I also uh, work there. I think you're going to play there this weekend, are you? I will be there this weekend, Friday. I believe. I think you'll be here Friday. quite possible. Yes, that's right. So, Jigs up there on Route 23 in, in Butler in, in New Jersey. Uh, so, okay, uh, we're going to be right back, and then you're going to do another song, which is going to be great. Thank you so very much for coming down to Thank the you. show. Thank you. And uh, we'll look forward to it. We'll be right back after a brief pause, which is like a small thing with your poodle. 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 Pause. <laughs> <laughs> Pictures of hope from child reach. Families and communities freeing themselves from the grip of the world's cruelest poverty with the help of child reach sponsorship. Self-help programs that mean clean water, medicine, schools, food, and a real chance for a better life. If you'd like to be part of these wonderful pictures, call 1-800-346-1100. 1-800-346-1100. Child Reach Sponsorship. Yes, it works. And uh, so, once again, Jan Lowe and Pam Lynn. Let it all come down.
Thank you. I could take it in, no problem. You know, this is New Jersey, though. Land of the Great Merge. <laughs> Are you a famous person or something? You, you, you kind of look a little famous there. You know, I drove around all the famous people. I doubt it. No, I have. I really have. I absolutely have. Sure. I'll tell you a story. Uh, about two years ago, I don't know, I was crossing the River Phoenix in my uh, Harrison Ford. I don't know, maybe I was crossing the Rock Hudson. Anyway, I was on the boat bridges overlooking scenic and beautiful uh, the Montgomery Cliff, you know what I mean? <laughs> sure. And uh, not too far from the bustling uh, Angelica Houston, you know? And anyway, out and west of Chevy Chase, about, um, you know, five miles outside of Maryland there. And uh, so I'm Peter O'Toole across uh, Lloyd Bridges there with my Tom Cruise control uh, set on 55. Got the double nickels there, if you know what I mean. And, um, yeah, you know, I got my two-pack Shakur uh, over here. And uh, Kevin uh, Bacon Sandwich. How you doing, Bobby? Uh, Kevin Bacon Sandwich uh, next to me there with uh, some John Candy in the uh, glove compartment over here. Excuse me a second. Yeah, Joey, I got a 4.15. We're going over to uh, New York City, okay? Thank you. Yeah, be there in about five minutes. Anyway, so there I am. Uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm driving along there. I finally get across the Lloyd Bridges, and uh, I'm thinking, um, oh, what the heck? I was, uh, oh, you want to get up here, by, by the way? Did you want to get up, up here? No? Okay. So anyway, uh, you know, I got my bacon sandwich there, my John Candy, and I'm driving along, and uh, I'm driving the Shelly long. In fact, that's when I was going there. And, uh, you know, all of a sudden I run into this heavy, heavy uh, Claude Rains, you know, and I'm thinking, hey, put, somebody put the taps on this Farrah Fawcett already, will you? Stop it. Uh, so my Harrison Ford there, you know, came too Glenn Close, uh, like that man there, uh, to, uh, too Glenn Close to uh, uh, going into a Brad Pitt almost. I'll tell you that right now. It was terrible. Uh, horrible, hor horrendous thing there. And uh, well, this was, of course, Richard Pryor to the trip. I had attached the uh, box, uh, Bruce Box Lightner. I'll get it straight. Uh, which uh, Natalie would uh, slow the car down and uh, before uh, Lawrence uh, Fishburne. You know what I'm saying there? You following me? Yeah. Because during, uh, during uh, Jonathan Winters or Jerry Springer uh, into Suzanne Summer or Jerry Falwell, you know, any time of the year, it's, it's, it's different. When you attach your Bruce Box Lightner, uh, and I like, like to, wait, by the way, do you want to get off up here? You, you, you do? Okay, we'll get off up here. Oh, hold on a second. All right, then. You know, I'll tell you, I, if I didn't have that Bruce Box Lightner, I would have been all over the road there. And I'm very, uh, I'm very fond of Henry, I'm very fond of Jane, and fond of Bridget, and fond of uh, Peter, too, because they turned me on to it. We're going to make it right here. Hold on. In fact, if you take that whole, uh, that whole uh, Fonda family there, you, you know, uh, if you, if you, if you, if you, if you, if you, if you uh, what the heck, I don't know. <laughs> if you Robert Stack them all up there, they're a victim of a family. Anyways, uh, you, you know, so there I am, um, I'm crossing the Jeff Bridges, and uh, I finally get to the other side, and I turn into a Christie Alley, you know, and I'm driving about five miles. All of a sudden, I slams on the brakes, and there's this Glenn Ford. It's upside down, right in the middle of the, uh, right in the middle the freeway there, and who's standing around it but some Sam Shepard. Yeah, he's got his Peter Coyotes and his Michael J. Foxes there, and uh, I say, hey, shouldn't you be out in your Sally Field holding your Michael Caine? <laughs> I don't know. So anyway, that's what I'm doing here. I, I, you know, I bend down and I, I look inside the, the Glen Ford there, and uh, who do I see? Um, who do I see but uh, but uh, Orson Welles? So uh, I say, uh, Mr. Welles, are you okay there? Oh, are you all right there? In the in, in upside down, he says, this Glen Ford is a Jack Lemmon. I said, oh, that's a pretty good thing. And his clothes are all ripped up. I figure he's going to need an Elizabeth Taylor any minute there. You know, I said, didn't you, Don, and read the road sign back there? It said, road bend ahead. He says, I thought it said rosebud ahead. <laughs> I don't even know. Okay, you want to, we're going to bear right here. Okay. 
Anyway, so I bend and I say, are you okay or what? He goes, yeah, I'm doing okay. Uh, we will sell no wine before it's time. Sure. And I said, I know about that one, but would you like me to call it Charles Chaplin? He says, no, nah, I'm okay, really. Uh, do you have a kind of bacon and egg sandwich or maybe some sliced Walter Pigeon? I said, I think you're fat enough there, pal, you know. I, I drove them all, though. I drove, hold on, who's that there? I thought I knew somebody. Okay, I'll make a left. I gotta make a left there. Here we, here we, here we go. All right. So anyway, I drive up to uh, Orson Welles. I said, listen, why don't you stop in here? I got my two-pack Shakur, uh, and uh, life goes on. It's a great highway. We can find something to do. Yeah, oh, absolutely. It's a beautiful thing. Whoa! Guy's a little bit close. Well, he, he, anyway, uh, do you believe that? Whoa! Yeah, hey, do you believe that story? No. What do you mean, no? It's a true story. Sure. Tell me another one. I'll tell you another one. Well, you know, one day, Jan Michael Vincent got into the side of my cab. The other side, Michael uh, da uh, David Lee Roth gets in. So I got Jan Michael Vincent, David Lee Roth. They want to go to Jennifer Jason Lee's house. You know, what the heck was that? All of a sudden, we're on a highway. Anyway, Michael Jan Vincent, da uh, Jan Michael Vincent, David Lee Roth. I got Jennifer Jason Lee's house on my mind. I say, are you sure you don't mean Mary Louise Parker? And they say, oh, no. I say, I think that's on Hastings on Hudson. So we're driving up there, and I had Mary Chip and Carpenter. They're on the radio. It's a beautiful thing. So we make a right, we make a left, we keep on going. It's a beautiful thing. You know, come on, that's it. Shut it up, Nancy. A one, two, three, four. <laughs>
Yeah. We'll be right back. <laughs> I guess I should do another, huh? I need a pick, though. Oh, Mark, this is way too heavy, this one. Picasso painted the old guitarist during a period of depression that lasted four years. His blue period. Today, with new discoveries, 80% of depressive disorders are being successfully treated, giving hope to millions that maybe now, nobody has to have a blue period. Math, a four-letter word, right? Hey, you don't need that. Why design the world's newest jets? <laughs> when you could be flipping the world's oldest burgers. Hey, wait a minute, this is math. Geometry, algebra. No pocket protectors here. But you're cruising without math. You're right. Take a good look. That's math staring back at you. It's not a problem, man. It's an answer. Call NACME. We'll tell you what you need to do. Walking on sunshine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> not bad with the, uh, you know. Well, we've been practicing that in my basement for the last six years. But we've only been actually uh, 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 rehearsing like one note at a time. So by the time that you get like to the, you know, like the second chorus, it's like, you, 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 there's like a thousand notes before then, and then you have to remember them. No, you can't. Uh, last, last time it was B flat. So I hope that didn't influence our playing tonight. Anyway. Oh, oh yeah, just a couple of things. A couple of things. I want to get them off my chest. A couple of things I've been thinking about going through my head, thinking about going through my head. I gotta get them out. Gotta get them out. If I don't, what happens is that in the middle of the week I start going like this. You know, you ever do that? And uh, but you gotta fight it sometimes. Well, I don't. I just let it go because it'll build up and then you'll be stuck like doing this for like a minute. That's kind of weird. So anyway, so here I'm giving you uh, so I don't have to worry about it. Police cars. Police cars. Aren't those lights? I don't know. Yeah, are they getting less pronounced? I mean, are, are the colors getting like a milder or muted, softer? Don't you think? I mean, they are. I mean, they, they used to be like blue, 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 red, red, red. Woo, woo, woo. Now, it's not so much that. It's like they're kind of like mauve and misty violet. Don't you think? Really? How many? Did they dare? Yes, they're trying to disarm us. They're trying to lull us into a sense of, of security. I think I don't know. Maybe it's our eyesight, and we're just we're just getting older, and everything starts to get fuzzy and kind of sentimental. But anyway, it's like you still hear the siren, but and but now the lights beckon, where before they summoned. Do you know what I mean? So it's like it's very it's very disarming. I must have, because there's a woo 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 woo. But now it's like, hi there. Sorry to bother you because, well, I guess you're probably texting or smoking something. So, listen, uh, if you have a chance, I don't mean to be too intrusive or anything, but, you know, if you have the time, could you possibly just pull over and we could chat? That, that's all I'm asking. Woo, woo, woo. Look at my beautiful lights. They're mauve and everything. So, no rush. Whenever you get a chance, whenever you're ready, but just, just pull over and, hey, thanks. And, by the way, would you care for a latte? I'm, that's where it's going. I'm telling you, they're going to be doing. Sure, they will. Except maybe not in the Bronx. Anyway, there and 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 there's this because of this Ebola thing, and everybody's losing their mind because of the Ebola. You know, we've lost like I don't know, 50 million people because of cancer and AIDS. But there's one guy in Texas who went because of some stupid people at a hospital. Other than that, have you seen the NBC news re <laughs> news reporter? Let me start that again. Have you seen the NBC news reporter? It, from West Africa, explaining why on camera from overseas, uh, she, she can't understand how her hired cameraman contracted the Ebola virus. She doesn't, she doesn't know. What, so, so they show her walking. What, the, the scene is she's walking down the street of on a Kampala or wherever, and, and, and she walks into the shot, and she states that very simple things like washing your hands can make a real difference. And as she's approaching this vat of what I can only surmise must be some sort of, you know, uh, disinfecting liquid of some kind, she proceeds to grab the, the handle and then, you know, and then she washes her hands and then, and then she grabs the handle again to shut it off. It's like, hmm, 
Let's see, you touched that dirty handle twice, but the second time you didn't wash your hands. I wonder how those things get contracted. I don't know. Hmm, maybe, nah. Okay, but here's somebody who knows everything. Welcome. Welcome back to Marvin Rhapsody's Know-It-All segment. Of course, if you know all the answers, you can go to the refrigerator. But if you don't, you might want to run these down and, and, and tell them to your friends later. Make them feel real stupid. <laughs> Make them feel like a real dope or something. Here we go. Okay. Almost poked my eye out just then. <laughs> but I didn't, because I'm smarter than that. Okay. Hey. If you had a match and you entered a room and there was an oil lamp, or an oil heater, and some kindling wood, which would you like first? Which would you like first? The match, you big dope. <laughs> a match, of course, you wouldn't light anything else. You couldn't light the match. You're not paying attention, see? Okay, Marvin Rhapsody here telling you how to think. All right, now, a man builds a house. That's not so hard, is it? I can't see through these glasses. That's why I can't go on with the sentence here. Oh, here we go. A man builds a house with four southern exposures. Four southern exposures. A bear walks by. What color's the bear? Ah, ba -da -ba. The bear's white. Of course, if he has a house with four southern exposures, he's got to be on the North Pole, doesn't he? Ha, <laughs> didn't think of that, did you, you big goony bird? I'll tell you, I got, all, I got them all here. All right. How far can a dog run into the woods? Huh? 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 Oh! Well, he can only run in halfway. The other half, he's running out. <laughs> I could have told you that if you were listening to me. Okay, listen, you should write these down and really embarrass your friends. Make them feel like total idiots in front of other people that you know. Maybe relatives and stuff, doing Thanksgiving dinner or Christmas get-togethers, doing a summer barbecue. Make them feel like they're just so small they don't know what the heck's going on. Mr. Know-it-all. Okay, I got one more question for you here. Number four or five. I don't know. I'm not keeping track. I'm not a genius, but I'm close to it. All right. You have two coins. They both total 55 cents. One is not a nickel. What are the two coins? Yep. What are the two coins? They both total 55 cents. You don't know? It's a 50 cent piece and a nickel. <laughs> yeah, the 50 cent piece is the one that's not the nickel. Ah, I got you on that one, didn't I? Well, thanks a lot. This has been the Marvin Rhapsody Show with uh, uh, the Mr. Know It All segment. And I'm Marvin Rhapsody reminding you to get to thinking about stuff that you don't know about. Because if you don't, you'll just forget about it. We'll be right back later on with part three. Welcome back to the Mark Dacey Show.
John, thank you for watching today, tonight, wherever you are. I want to thank my guests today, Jan and Pam, Lynn and Lowe. <laughs> That's Pam Lynn and Jan Lowe. Thank you very much for coming and crazy us with your presence, girls. Made the show, made the show happen, y'all. Yeah, 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 yeah. Expanded house band. The expanded house band. The expanded house band, y'all. Uh huh. Get so bad to get to jump back and kiss yourself, baby. Make her feel good too. Uh. Nancy Kaplan on per wait, percussion and and vocals. Yeah. Almost forgot what you did. Present Billy Willman on bass guitar. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Our new addition. Oh! Joe Clarkson. He makes it up. He makes it up back there on his drums. Thing. Yo. Yo. Directing, making it happen. 
Ellen, Ellen's back there. Ellen McLay too. Yeah. Support. We're gonna have a song next time with her. It'll be a fine thing. Fine thing. Where's Zachary? Get Zachary out here. That's all right. Tell him to come on. Tell him his dad wants him. No, huh? All right, well, I guess I'm not paying him scale, huh? All right, well, anyway. Coming to you from the BK Media Studios right here on the East Coast, Mark Daisy Show, produced by Broadband Box Office. Dot com will be archived. Check it out. Like us. Do it right. Twerk us. Tweet us. Send us stuff. You know how it is. <laughs> yeah, we'll be on YouTube in a couple of weeks too, I think. So. Uh huh. Not a bad show. My name is Tom Ragu of the Tom Ragu Sit-Down Comedy Show. You can listen to us at the Broadband Box Office. And for more information, please visit www.tomragu.com slash podcast. Hi, I'm Randy Lupo, host of the Randy Lupo Show on Broadband Box Office. Wait, is that a tongue twister or an alliteration? Come meet my favorite people, comedians, actors, writers, spiritual people, and everyone in between. I'm looking forward to seeing you. I'm Lou Cicinia. And I am Daisy. And check us out at the Greater Jersey Buzz. At broadbandboxoffice.com. Broadbandboxoffice.com. Remember that. The finest talent in the world are on these microphones every month. I kid you not. Yes, we will have a variety of different guests ranging from comedians, entertainers, singers, politicians, you name it. We're going to bring it to you with light conversation, a lot of information, but most of all, a lot of fun. Check us out at the Greater Jersey Buzz. And you'll see Daisy, too. And you'll see Lou. <laughs> Hi, everybody. How are you? I'm Bob Gonzo of the Bob Gonzo Show. And I'm here to introduce the Bob Gonzo Show to you. Watch the Bob Gonzo Show on... ...mondays.com and iTunes. Watch it live or you can watch it on the archives, which means you can watch it forever. Bob Gonzo is the greatest show on the internet right now. It's the funniest, it's the sweetest, it's endearing. We have stand-up comics, we have bands, we have actors, we have people in the fashion industry. We have everything you need. So once again, the Bob Gonzo Show, the greatest show in the world. And if you watch it, you will become a better and happier and sweeter person. You, 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 you. Watch the Bob Gonzo Show, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. 
Hello, this is Dr. Barry Prostowski. I invite you to watch Courageous Doctors, an exciting new show on broadband box office about how healthcare is affecting you today. Hi, I'm Lisa Descoli. And I'm Annie White. Tune in to Talk of the Town on broadbandboxoffice.com. The second Tuesday of every month at 7 p.m. And like us on Facebook and leave us your comments.